Hi, my name is Mark Copeman. Welcome to this series of three programmes in which we'll be discussing how to manage fraud across the rapidly evolving M-Commerce channel. We'll touch on consumer behaviour, understanding fraud detection tools, and ultimately show you the key components required to create your mobile fraud strategy. According to a recent CyberSource survey, merchants are seeing up to 25% of orders are now being submitted via mobile devices, and expectations are that this number will continue to rise. As M-Commerce takes a larger share of overall revenues, it will become ever more crucial to understand the differences between M-Commerce and e-commerce fraud, and create strategies to manage that M-Commerce channel effectively. This series will provide tools and tips to help you get started and in this, the first programme of the series, we'll be looking at the different behaviours that e-commerce and m-commerce consumers exhibit and the implications of these behaviours for fraud management in the mobile channel. So, time now to meet our first guest. As the number of consumers purchasing using mobile devices continues to grow, ensuring you have an effective mobile fraud management strategy in place becomes crucial to continued success. The first step in creating this strategy is understanding the different ways consumers behave when purchasing using different devices. I'm joined in the studio now by Sean Mathey, CyberSource's Director of Strategic Technology Partners in EMEA. Sean, hi and welcome to the programme. No, thank you for having me. Now, first of all, let's, let's explore why is understanding user behaviour just so important? Well, fraud rules are designed to reflect um, consumer behaviour and to help merchants to identify behaviour that's outside of what's normal and therefore likely to be fraudulent. As the, the mobile channel matures, what we're finding is that people's behaviour is very different and therefore creating challenges for merchants when trying to identify what is or not normal behaviour from the mobile channel. OK, so how does that location behaviour then, does that impact fraud management rules? Well, IP geolocation has always been a, um, a very strong um, piece of data used to help identify fraudulent behaviour from an e-commerce perspective. Sure. Um, with the fact that mobile devices can transition between multiple IP addresses or multiple locations, um, as well as mobile networks, IP geolocation on its own becomes less effective mm. as a way of identifying fraudulent behaviour. OK, so we've got location as our first behaviour. Uh, what else? The number of devices that people use to make a purchase um, in the mobile channel is actually more varied than it is in traditional e-commerce. Okay. Uh, people traditionally would have used maybe a desktop PC or a laptop um, in order to make a tra an e-commerce transaction, uh, but they would start and finish that journey on the one device. Mm. In the, the mobile channel, people may well start their journey on a mobile phone, on a, on a smartphone yeah. and actually transition to a tablet to complete that order. So from a, from a merchant perspective, if you have rules which flags up multiple logins or multiple account logins from different devices as potentially fraudulent, that's going to get triggered more and more from the mobile channel. All right, so we've got, we've got location now, we've got range of devices, um, anything else to consider? Time of day is definitely something they should be looking out for. Um, the fact that mobile devices are mobile and they can be used to make purchases at different uh, at different places um, than traditional e-commerce has prompted a change in behaviour for people to make purchases during what would traditionally have been dead time from an e-commerce perspective. As opposed to in the office or at home in the evening? Absolutely, yeah. That sort of thing. You're going to talk me through an example of some of these concepts in action. Yeah, certainly. Imagine this scenario. You're on your way to work and you remember that you need to buy some important travel tickets. You get out your smartphone and you make the purchase there and then so that you don't forget. You go to work, you log into your PC, and during the day you decide to purchase the TV that you were researching online last night. You do it at the PC since you're already there. You later go home, and that evening you decide that you're going to order the food shopping for the next week. You reach for the nearest device, which happens to be your tablet, on the sofa next to you, and you make the purchase. Traditional e-commerce fraud rules might regard the orders made on the mobile or the tablet as risky just because they're being placed outside of normal times for e-commerce activity. But in the mobile channel, this is perfectly normal behaviour. This example isn't unique. While most online shopping does take place on a PC during the daytime, when people are at work, the convenience of mobile devices means that orders are often placed earlier or later in the day, when consumers are away from their laptops or PCs. 
If your fraud detection rules regard late night or early morning orders as risky, then you may start to see genuine mobile orders incorrectly flagged as fraudulent. So great insight there. Thanks very much indeed for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So when it comes to managing mobile fraud, we can see how important it is to take the behaviour of a mobile customer into account, as well as having an understanding of how that behaviour differs from that of an e-commerce customer. The next question we need to ask is how can you put that into practice when creating mobile fraud rules? To help us answer that question, I'm delighted to be joined on the line now by Chris Lomax, who's the Senior Director of Solutions Management and Strategy for EMEA, here at Cybersource. Uh, hi there, Chris. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Hello, Mark. Thanks very much. So, Chris, let me begin then. Um, tell me, what do merchants need to do to factor mobile behaviour into their fraud management rules? Well, Mark, there are two things a merchant needs to do in order to create rules based on mobile customer behaviour. First is to start identifying which of their orders are being submitted on a mobile device. And the second is to start gathering data on those orders that can help them assess whether they're genuine or not. Okay, Chris, that sounds simple enough, but what does that actually mean? How, how do merchants start identifying those mobile orders? There are a couple of options available when looking at identifying mobile orders. Uh, examples include capturing the fact that an order has come through either a mobile optimised website or a mobile app, or capturing and analysing the device fingerprint. The first example allows you to identify a mobile transaction and apply fraud rules specifically built for mobile orders, um, but the second allows you to capture more specific data about the device to help build mobile specific profiles. Okay, that's great, Chris. Now, once a merchant is actually tracking those mobile orders, um, what sort of information can they collect um, which is different to e-commerce transactions? A lot of the information collected will be the same type of information as for e-commerce, but the specifics may differ. For example, a mobile phone number might be given instead of a landline. Uh, sometimes more or less data can be collected, very much depending upon the device operating system. For example, Apple's iOS is locked down, so limited data might be gathered, whereas Samsung's browser provides quite specific details. Native mobile apps can also provide additional data such as download or installation IDs or universal unique identifiers including uh, IMEI, MEIDs or UDIDs. Uh, okay, so now we know what information is available, uh, how can we actually go about collecting it? Well, uh, merchants can make use of mobile device management services to access mobile order data. Services that focus on analytics for consumer apps include Localytics or Flurry. There are solutions designed primarily as enterprise management uh, tools such as Apple's MDM AirWatch or MobileIron, but make sure if you use these that they provide the functionality required. Okay, so now we understand that, how does M-Commerce customer behaviour uh, fit into this picture? Okay. Your knowledge about how your mobile customers behave will help you decide how to use this data you're gathering. Um, for example, your M-Commerce rules would reflect that mobile orders are often placed late at night, and so the threshold for a riskier time would be different. In this way, you'd be able to build rules that uh, reflect the behaviour of consumers purchasing via mobile devices. Chris, thanks very much indeed for your insight today. Thanks very much. Now, let's quickly recap then on uh, today's programme. Uh, firstly, mobile consumers behave differently to e-commerce consumers. If your fraud management rules don't reflect this, you may be unnecessarily screening or rejecting mobile orders. Alternatively, you may be approving fraudulent ones. Secondly, mobile consumer buying behaviours differ from desktop-based consumers in a number of ways. And we need to be aware of the number of devices they use, their geographic location, and the time of day they're completing a purchase. If you have any questions about what you've seen today, then please get in touch using the details on screen. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.